Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? You should be. <laughs> Everyone say, I'm the salt. Oh, you know what salt is, right? Salt stings. And it also makes you thirsty. But there's something beautiful about salt. It preserves. Mm. Three attributes of salt. That's why the Lord said, you are to be the salt of the world because wherever you go, you should bring a sting. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Turn to something. There, are you there? Okay. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We just had a redirection here. Praise God. Jeremiah 18. Glory. <laughs> We're going to get there in a second here. <laughs> Verse 1, even. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the what? Potter's house. Come on, speak it with me. And there I will cause you to what? Hear my words. Why was he telling him to go down to the potter's house? He wanted him to hear my, his words, right? So he said, look, for you to hear a little bit more from me, we need to do something about this whole thing. So why don't you go down to the potter's house? So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. Now, the wheel represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's one who regenerates you and me. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he crushed it. <laughs> see, you don't see that part. He pressed it down and crushed it. <laughs> and so he made it what? Again, into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. So to make it again, you'd have to crush it. How many of you know God prunes me and you? For, so that we would bear more fruit or bear, bear fruit that he's been predestined for you and I to bear fruit of. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, now you know when he speaks of Israel, he's speaking about us, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. The instance I speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to what? Pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent from the disaster that I have thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning the nation, concerning the kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent from concerning good with which I said I would benefit. That's pretty wild. Because what he's saying, he's saying, you know, so many people cry out, fire! I want fire. I want the fire of God. I want more of God. And then when he puts you on the wheel, you book. You run like wimpies. Because people, many people can't handle the fire of God. You know what happens when the fire of God comes? He purifies he exposes every little nook and cranny that you knew that's offensive to him. And believe me, these are the things that you don't even know about. That you thought maybe, oh, God puts up with, it's cool, I'm all right. Oh, really? You get on the potter, on that wheel, exposure. It's like Holy Ghost x-ray. He's going to expose every little thing that begins why? Because he wants to flow through me and you. And let me tell you, go through a season of getting on that potter's wheel. And I can tell you right now that God is putting the body of Christ on the potter's wheel. Because he's trying to get something to us. And he's concerned that we won't receive what we call pure direction. Everyone say pure direction. See, there's a difference between direction and pure direction. Most of the time, direction, when we get direction from something, we compromise it. 
But per pure direction is uncompromised. And that's what he's trying to get us into unity. Why? Because when God sets us in a pure direction, there is unity. There's like-mindedness. Amen? Is everybody okay? Good. Go to Psalm 24. Pure direction. You know how many times have you've said to the Lord, Lord, I'll do whatever it takes. Then he puts you through that challenge. Okay, let's see. What are you willing to get rid of? <laughs> what are you willing to do? Come on, you told me you'd w do whatever it takes. Let me see. <laughs> oh, yes. And then the thing that you don't want to get rid of, he says, that's your idol. I'm not talking about getting rid of your spouse. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> Although, anyways, I won't go there. 24. <coughs> Praise God. I'm not telling you to get rid of your children and whatever. You know. But, uh, you know, God brings us to that place. Why? So we can walk in a pure direction. In Psalm 24 and verse 3, let's speak it together. What does it say? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Pure heart. Pure heart. That means uncontaminated. It's pure. It's not soiled. It's pure. So that's why he says you got to have clean hands, making sure that you're not touching something that's unclean, an idol, or whatever it may be, because it will affect your heart. Why? Because your hands are going to agree with your heart. Amen? Okay, let's go a little further. He says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, and who has not lifted up his what? Soul to an idol nor sworn what? Deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. Everybody wants to be blessed, but people aren't willing to pay the price. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who what? Seek him and who seek his face. Again, who may have a true... Now listen to this. He's saying, I'm going to give you true access to me. I'll give you access to me. It's a pure access. It's a pure connection. He says, but you got to have clean hands and a pure heart. See, we want the fullness of God, not just partial. You know, there's a difference of managing, amen, and then be compared to being blessed. And I'm not talking about materialism. I'm talking about the things of God and revelation. Man, when there's, the, when there's that pure communication and pure access to him all the time, that is the richest thing that you could ever have. But the enemy loves to put things in, in, in our, that cause us misdirection, and then we begin to refocus here and refocus there, and then it becomes, those things become idols. Anything that moves you out of pure access to God is called an idol. Amen? This is just not something that just, let me share with you, there's, mul there's multiple levels of believers. That's why there's three chambers. Each chamber has an access to God's presence. Amen? Some people are living in the outer court. Some people are living in the holy place. And some people are living in the most holy place. And those are the ones that have constant, pure access to God all the time. Yes, we know God says, yes, you can have access to me. and have boldness in the day. And no man comes to the Father except for through Jesus. But we want access all the time. We can reach a place where there's no delay. Does everybody get that? And there's a place where he, he, 
He challenges us. He puts us on that wheel and crushes us. Why? He's turned us into his son. He's turning us. Did Jesus have access all the time? Was, was there anything that he was limited on? No. No. He had access to daddy all the time, and you and I should too. But you've got to have clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Who may have a true access of a pure connection of God's presence? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. In other words, we are free from any contamination like lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. We are free from them. We are free from idols of self-will, self-desires, and selfish ambitions or <laughs> selfish entitlements. Blessings come from the Lord to those who seek him and not self. Again, this is where the area where self has always got to get out of the way, doesn't it? Why? Because the person's attitude, mode, and desires and will is always about kingdom business. And there's that place where we have, to, we have to coordinate by divine order kingdom business and personal business. That's why the Lord says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness as all things will be added to you. So he's saying kingdom business should always be first before personal business. People are always reversing putting personal business before kingdom business. And so many times an individual live in that arena and never even know it. And not even know it. And they will sustain, but they'll never reach that place where they can walk in a pure direction. They can't walk pure direction. And that's what we want. We want to walk in a pure direction so that there is nothing interfering. In other words, direction that comes from God. Amen? Counsel, correction, and direction. Counsel, correction, and direction. And what that does is when you walk in a pure direction, you have pure protection. You are protected in a way where there seems to be no way. Even when you make a mistake, you are protected. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you're putting kingdom business first before personal business all the time. But once you start putting personal business first, then you're rejecting you're rejecting kingdom business. So your attitude and motive and desire always must be about the kingdom. That's my first priority every single day. That's why every day it says, seek the Lord. Seek his face. Good morning, Holy Spirit, every morning. Go pray. Go get connected. That's what he wants me and you to do. And then warfare. So then the rest of the day, you can just play with the Holy Spirit. You know, you skip a lunch, have a great time. Yo, what's up? See, if you do your warfare and you do everything, you get dressed, possessed, and everything else, you do your warfare and you call down fire on every area, you bind every strongman wherever you go, you do everything you got to do in your warfare. You do your warfare prayers, you kick butt, you move them out of their way. Why? Because you are atmosphere changers. Then wherever you walk, the presence of God is released. Angels are gone before you. He's directing your pure path. But the moment you touch something unclean and agree with it, they have to rearrange everything. Why? Because you just went off course. And he's always trying to keep us on course. Jesus stayed on course all the way to the cross. He stayed on course all the way. He stayed on course right to hell. He stayed on course right to heaven. And he's on course right now. And we're to follow that same course. He walked in a pure direction. And so you, you and I must walk in a pure direction. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. In verse 1. Let's speak it. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. 
For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Let me share something. When, when you're right with God, you earn trust of man. Why? Because you've earned the trust of God. Does everybody understand this? Everything is earned. Remember, grace is not an, an area to where it's God's unmerited favor. Favor is earned. Amen? It's unmerited love. So we are saved by God's unmerited love, which gave us a plan. Grace is the plan of escape, isn't it? So grace should be a pure direction, shouldn't it? If you want to walk in a victory and everything, you are walking in grace, which is the plan of escape from the Satan's and the powers of darkness, deception, and of course, the escape from the wrath of God. Why? Because now you are, if you're cooperating with grace in the plan, you are walking a pure direction. Amen? Amen. What does it say in ver uh, verse 5? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That's where people battle. That's where they battle. Do not lean on your own understanding. See, when things don't seem to go, look it. David said something powerful, and you'll hear me say this over, to, over and over. He said, I always set the Lord before me. Why? So he's constantly convicted and counseled, corrected, and brought direction. The only way that you can do this is to be connected. Do you know that David sat in front of the ark majority of the time? Anytime he would go through whatever, he'd go sit in front of the ark. He loved God's presence. That's why he had praise and worshipers 24 hours a day. You know, he was connected to the presence of the Lord. In fact, he didn't even give a hoot. He said, I'm going to dance in my underwear. And he did. Now, I don't want anyone to show up in your undies and dance, amen? We're going to keep it good here. Praise God. We have enough assumptions. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Speaking of assumptions. Praise God. Okay. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Stop leaning on your own understanding. In all of your ways, what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your path. That's a pure direction, isn't it? That's pure. It's undefiled, uncontaminated. It's pure. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. That's reverence, honor, and respect. Well, that means he's in front of you all the time. Gosh, Lord, what do you think? You know, I'm considering doing something. What do you, what's your opinion on this? That's how you talk to him. Show me, Holy Spirit. What am I supposed to do? Is there something I did to offend you? Let's go kick some butt. Yeah. Let's go rescue some souls. Let's go cast out some devils. Yeah. That's a Holy Ghost sport. He's a devil remover and a sin exposer. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It's going to be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Again, do not forget the counsel of the Lord, which is trust. Trust. Don't lean on your own understanding. Or Now, not leaning on your understanding means that you fall into what we call a presumptuous place where you assume. That is a very dangerous place place that is not a pure direction if you assume you are dangerous if you live a life of assuming you are a dangerous individual because people that assume live by how they feel they make decisions in how they feel they do not make decisions by truth does everybody get it people that assume are dangerous and god's trying to break all of that off his children so in this we see that Leaning not on your own understanding or pers presumptuous ways. In other words, it's when you fall in a, 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 an area where you become presumptuous, it is a, a, a failing to observe limitations. 
Is everybody got it? It's failing to observe limitations of, of what is permitted. It's failing to observe limitations of what is permitted. Amen? Let's just say you go to a stop sign, but you stopped past it. Or you didn't make a complete stop, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. <laughs> Hello? And the next thing you know, that you get pulled over and say, well, you know, you, you, you didn't make a complete stop. Did you go over the limitations? Yes, you assumed that it was okay because you didn't need to make a complete, even though you knew you needed to make a complete stop, but you assumed that no police officer was watching you. <laughs> Hello? It's the same thing. There is going to be a reaping for assuming. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. What is, what is presumptuous way? It is failing to observe the limitations of what is permitted. Not acknowledging him can lead to the crossing over boundaries set by the Holy Spirit. And that's what he does every day for me and you. He resets us every single day. Every day. In fact, we have a rule in our campus. The number one rule is no assuming. That is the number one rule. Do not assume. Find out, ask. If you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. You wait until you know. Psalm 19. Why? Because you want a pure direction. Uh, in verse 7, Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. That's his commands. Those are directions. They're pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and honeycomb. Moreover, by them... Your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. And in not keeping them there is judgment. There's reaping. It says here, look at this, verse 12. Who can understand his errors? What did he say? Cleanse me from the secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. That's assuming let them not even have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. So God looks at presumptuous sin as a great transgression. He cannot trust us when we live that way. Amen? And, and if you're truly a believer of Christ, you want to earn his trust, don't you? Amen? You not only want to earn his trust, you want to gain his favor. Praise God. Is everybody okay? Presumptuous sin, sin is because individuals don't acknowledge the Lord before decision making. They are assumers and dangerous people to themselves and to others, resulting in harmful to themselves and others, and, and, and they go through harmful experiences. The commandment of God is the commands, which he commands me and you every day. He's always given me and you commands. Why? Because he's, he's releasing pure directions. These are directions from the Lord which are pure. God releases pure directions, not, on, not contaminated directions. Amen? He doesn't release compromise. He doesn't release presumptuous, but pure Pure directions come from a pure connection to his presence. And the results are always pure. Amen? They're always pleasing to God. 
So pure direction, pure connection, pure results. Hallelujah. Again, the number one contamination is pride. It is the number one killer of all mankind. Pride. It's the number one killer. Sicknesses and diseases. Pride is the number one killer. Proverbs 12. Pure connection with pure results. Proverbs 12. Everybody okay? Now that you know you're on the potter's wheel. <laughs> Let's speak it together. Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. Hello, that makes it plain and simple. Is there anybody here? No, raise your hand. People don't like to be told what to do. I said people. Humans. You and I should be looking for correction. See, if you're looking for correction, then you're not going to be offended. Amen. Lord, correct me. Every morning my prayer is that, Lord, search me through, remove those things that offend you, and bring your counsel, correction, and direction to me. Slap me in the head if I miss it. Kick me in the butt. I don't care what you do, but don't let me miss what you're trying to tell me. I want pure direction every single day. Establish my steps and my thoughts. As I cast my cares upon you and acknowledge you in all of my ways, you'll establish my steps and thoughts. We should be looking for conviction. We should be looking for correction. It doesn't mean we're bad. Look at if you at least look for it and talk to the Lord about it. Lord, hey, correct me on this. Do you think you're going to start earning his trust or losing it? Earning it. Why? Because the one thing you want to do is be honest with God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, it says, verse 2, A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he will condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Wow. So you and I should love instruction. We should love correction. Why? Because then we receive fresh rhema, fresh revelation from God. When he corrects you, there's always something that follows. Every time. When you're willing to accept and look for correction, Lord, correct me, please. He says, okay, I need you to do this. Okay, and you do it, man, something always follows. There's always a follow. There's always a follow of his approval to you. Something will happen, something you've been asking for, or something's going, something you might even got freed from. Wow, I didn't even know it was there bothering me. It's gone. Why? Because he, he loves to reward his children. And one of the greatest things is revelations from the Lord. You can gain favor from him. Because why? Now you're rooted to his connected, to, to, to the pure presence of God. You're rooted to that. And so you're always being fed. Always being fed. Amen? 1 Samuel 15. Pure direction comes from pure connection. And the results of a pure connection is pure results. Amen? Something pure. Which means uncontaminated. It's not contaminated. It's sealed by God, approved by Him. Sanctioned by Him. 1 Samuel 15, please. In verse 17. 1 Samuel 15, 17. Let's speak it together. So Samuel said, who was the prophet, 
and he was talking to King Saul. He said, when you were little in your own eyes, in other words, when you were humble, homie, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? When you were humble. Now, the word says that a broken heart, God is close to. That means a person that's humble. And again, please do not go to the Lord and say, hi, I'm your humble servant. Puke. I mean, really. Hi, I'm your humble servant. Man, that's, I, when people start praying that way, I want to move away. <laughs> Why, you know that person's going right on the wheel, man. <laughs> Welcome to the wheel. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Praise God. You know, tell God how much humble you are. <laughs> Welcome to the wheel. That's gagging. Anyways. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? In other words, he placed them in a position. And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission. And he said, go and utterly destroy the sinners and the Amalekites and fight against them until they are all what? Consumed. The mission. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, wait a minute. But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I went over, I went on the mission, just like the Lord asked me to. And I brought back the king. Did the Lord tell him to bring back the king? No, he told him to kill him. So did he assume? Oh, And bring, he brought back Agog, king of Amalek. And I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But you didn't utterly destroy the Amalekites. The king is still there. But the people took the plunder, sheep, oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, but we, just, we took them. Why? Because we wanted to sacrifice them to the Lord God and show how good we are. Wrong. He said, kill them. Even the animals, everything, and don't take nothing from that place. Go destroy them. Why? Because they were a Nephilim race. That's where they were from. Kill them all. God wasn't just out to kill humans. They were the Nephilim race. In verse 22. And the king, and, and Sa the prophet Samuel said to the king, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Wow. So assumption is rebellion. He said in stubbornness is as in iniquity and idolatry. And because you've rejected the word of the Lord, you also, he has also rejected you from a position of a king. Does everybody get it? A position of what? Authority. Oh, praise God. King Saul compromised his mission. He went on beyond the boundaries of authority and assumed it was okay, but it was rebellious in the eyes of God because pride blinds. Amen? What does it blind? It blinds the understanding of what God wants. James chapter 3. One morning, my wife and I were praying, and, uh, and I, I said something about, Lord, challenge us today or something. Challenge us today, Lord, so that we can be more in your image. Boy, did it come, let me tell you. Praise God. She was like, I stayed joyful, and praise God, hallelujah. My wife slapped, smacked me. She said, what'd you pray that for? I said, come on, man. We want to get closer. We want to get better. We want to be more like Jesus. Yes, it came. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we're more like Jesus today. <laughs> yes. 
I learned a long time ago, assuming is very dangerous. I hate to assume. I do. I hate to assume. Now, there's an area where you just got to maintain the course until things change. Amen? Until the Holy Spirit changes it. Or a door shuts. Amen? I, 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 don't get, I don't move until I'm thrown out. Unless the Lord tells me, and if I ain't heard from him, usually I get thrown out of places. I've been thrown out of, th what, three jails now? I don't know, <laughs> after being there for many years. 17 years in jail, pr in the jail ministry, and three of them, pff, why, they didn't, because they, didn't, they became politically correct. And they didn't like what I had to say because I was listening to the Holy Spirit, and I didn't care what man said. And they became politically correct. They were more concerned about offending inmates than cha changing their lives. God will deal with them. James 3 and verse 13, please. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly and sensual and what? Demonic. Now, this wisdom tells you what to do. You know what it promotes? Assumption. That's the wisdom from the world. It promotes assumption. Watch this. Verse 16, what does it say? Um, where, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Is first what? Is first what? Oh, now wait a minute. Wisdom tells you what to do. It's called pure direction, isn't it? Amen. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to what? Yield. That's obey. Full of mercy and good fruits. That means pure results. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who what? Who make peace. So the wisdom tells us what to do. It brings us direction. Understanding tells us how to do it. It brings you and I instruction. Amen? Sometimes instruction doesn't come. Direction comes first. He's, look at, what did he tell Abraham? He said, look at, get out of there. Get out of your country. Get everything. Just head this way. He didn't tell him what was going, how to do it, whatever. He didn't tell him, pack this, leave this, do this, do that. Does everybody get it? He just said, go. Go. And they did. That's why. Because he had a pure connection. He was on a pure path. He didn't care. He just went. Whatever he had to leave behind, he left. Whatever it was he had to do, he did it. Hallelujah. And the results were pure. Good fruits. 2 Corinthians 6. See, when you are connected to that degree, you don't want anything to contaminate your relationship. You don't want anything to contaminate the presence of God. Nothing. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, please. Let's speak it. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Okay, cool. Come out from among them. What's he talking about? Come out from the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, rebellion, false agreements with the enemy. Don't touch anything unclean. Why? Because what is it going to do? It's going to contaminate your direction. It's going to contaminate your path. You will begin to drift, and you won't know it. And sometimes God doesn't tell you you're off course. He expects you to ask him. 
He expects you to seek him. So many people go, man, why didn't the Lord tell me this? Because you never sought it. You never asked them about it. You never asked them to convict you. You never asked them if you were on the right course. You never, did you ever ask them if you know, the things that you were doing were pleasing him? Have you ever asked them, Lord, what can I do to please you today? You know, the majority of the time he says to me, when I ask him that, he says, be like me. Be like me. Unless there's something that he wants to redirect me so I stay in a pure course. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 4. In verse 10, Ten to thirteen, let's speak it together. Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in its what? Right paths. Ah, this is the pure wisdom from above, which will bring pure direction, won't it? When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. And do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Wow. Every one of us needs instruction. Amen? Every one of us needs counsel, correction, direction, because it brings protection. Every one of us. It doesn't matter where or who or how long you've been a believer. It doesn't matter. Hosea chapter 5. In verse 10, Hosea 5 in verse 10 and 12 through 12. Look at what he says. He says, the princes of Judah are like those who remove a what? Landmark. In other words, boundaries. I will pour out my wrath on them like water. Ephraim was oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly walked by what? Human precept. Human precept. You, you know, I can't live that way no more. We can't live a way a human lives. We must live a way an eternal light lives. Amen? We must see what God sees. We must know in your spirit what pleases him. That's with a connection through his presence. Therefore, I will be to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Judah like what? Rottenness. In other words, they remove the boundaries of authority. They walk by human perception, not godly perception. Amen? Amen? Second Timothy 3. Actually, you're already on the potter's wheel. <laughs> the whole body of Christ is on the potter's wheel right now. Some are still kicking and screaming. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> you know, and it's not an area to where, you know, so many times we think, gosh, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I don't remember doing anything wrong. But that's because of looking through our own eyes. Amen. Amen. But what God sees, look at it, and, and it's, not always, it's not always about right and wrong. It's about pleasing and displeasing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in other words, if direction or information was given to you and me and we misuse it, that's wrong. And it doesn't mean, mean you sinned. Amen? You don't have to sin on that. It's just wrong in the eyes of God. Why? Because it's displeasing. And he knows if you're going to, you know, what did Paul, Paul said? Look, at, I, don't, I don't let anything, not, not everything is good for me. 
even though it's not sin. So I, I don't, but I don't allow anything to take dominion over me. So that's where you have to be careful about your desires. You can't allow them to have dominion over you. The only thing that you want dominion over you is truth. Amen? And being led by the Spirit of God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Amen? Or in the last days, we know perilous times are coming. What does it say? Men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have in a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and ministries and make captives of gullible men, women, loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts. They're always learning, but they're never able to get free. Does everybody get it? They're always learning, but they can never get free. Never. Why? Because they've never come to that place of complete surrender. They've never come to that place of letting go of everything. They never come to that place of letting go of self. You know, sometimes God wants to hand you a shovel and say, bury yourself. Amen. Bury yourself. Here you do it. That's what we call mastering your own death. Amen? Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth or get free. There's a lot of people that are out there learning. There's a lot of people out there that know truth, but they're not free. They're not free because there's still something, always something in a way, and it's always usually the majority is self. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Self. Now, what protects self? Pride. Pride is the number one protector of self. What protects pride? Fear. What protects fear? Anger. What protects anger? Lying. Think, if you go down the road, man, you can see it all the way down. Each one protects each one. So when a person falls into that arena of protecting self, you can see all the other ones. They're even lying to themselves, aren't they? Yeah. Amen. Assumptions. Presumptuous sin. Oh, praise God. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. So we see, let's go, I'm going to go more, a little bit more on this. In verse 8. Now as Jamus and Jabers resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be at Antioch, at Icam, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That is happening now. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you what? Wise for what? Salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may com be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work, which is known as a pure result. Oh, hallelujah. Second Timothy, or Second Peter chapter 2. Second Pete 2. Second Peter 2 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. P2. 
pure direction. Pure direction. You know, one of the things that Elijah said to his servant when he went, he said, man, don't talk to nobody on the way. Why? Because he said, look it, I know if you do, you're going to be misled. Don't talk to anyone on the way. Go and fulfill your mission and come back. Don't be distracted. Do what you got to do, and that's it. Verse 1, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. But there will also be false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies and even denying the Lord who bought them and brought on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time their judgment has, had been, has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Do not, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Mo Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. And turning the city, cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. For these, like natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. There are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Accursed children. Wow. Psalm 1. You know, we have to get to a point where you stop blaming others for our misdirections. Amen? That's why the Word says everybody must work out their own salvation. God wants to get us on a pure course with pure direction. Psalm 1, let's speak it. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Uh-huh. Cursed. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. So again, he says, look it, don't take counsel from the ungodly. In other words, rebellious. And, and don't stand in the path of liars, or just sinners, and don't sit in the scornful. Don't, you know, don't get in a place of presumption. And he says, delight yourself in the truth. In other words, always compare what is being truth. He said, then you're going to prosper. Now, verse 4 it says, the ungodly are not so. They are the rebellious, aren't they? But they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. That's a reward nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Now he's looking at ungodliness as being rebellious. Amen? Bless. God wants to bless us. Counsel, correction, direction brings protection. Amen? Pure direction with the wisdom that's from above is pure. And I want to close at Matthew 5. Examine yourself. Just 
stop justifying and start recognizing. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit. Or blessed that are poor in spirit. I'm sorry. Blessed that are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Wow. Pure direction. Right to his throne. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. Put on the lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Powerful. Powerful. That is called a pure result. Amen? So, pure, pure direction comes from being connected to the pure presence of God. Amen? And then from that point, you will always have a pure result. Everything. Favor. Everything. If God be for you, then who can be against you? Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace, please, to abound abundantly. And, Lord, any area where we are off course, we ask, Lord, that you release your wisdom to us, grant us conviction, counsel, instruction, and correction that we may be connected to the pure presence of the King of glory so that we may receive pure direction and so that there may be pure results of good fruits, bringing glory to your name and honoring the King in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed.